can I say crack? <laughs> can I say that? You can say whatever you want. <laughs> um, it's, what is it like? It's a thrill. It's the most exciting thing you can cover as a journalist because there's just nonstop energy. There's nonstop flow. You're working 24 hours on some on a piece that just it means nothing the next day. It's almost like everything is like into this one day. So I don't know. I guess it's like crack. Like I can't stop. I love it. Ooh. Um, covering an election is like playing a sport. Um, you go in with a game plan, but you have to be ready for that to change on the fly. Um, and you prepare for all of the different ways that it could change on you. It's crazy. It's like craziness. I mean, I, I, not just elections, I mean any big event, but the elections sort of have everything that big events have. You know, they have um, information coming out at all times from different sources. Uh, Everything happens in real time, they're a real time update. It's like if the Super Bowl lasted from 5 p.m. to 2 a.m., basically. Covering an election is like nothing you will ever expect. It's kind of like whose line is it anyway, where you think you know what's gonna happen and you really don't know what's gonna happen because it doesn't seem to matter at the end. It's a challenge and a half, to say the least. So this election, um, and my partner and I are gonna be covering the Marty Walsh after party, I guess, during the election. So we're gonna be live tweeting and we're going to be at his actual headquarters when the announcements come in. So to prepare for that, we have to talk to the press secretary, make sure we have our credentials. Um, we have to talk to anyone who's gonna be there. We have to make sure that we're up to date because if we don't get our credentials, we have to make do, we have to figure it out. We might just have to show up to his party if we know where it is and go from there, which is something people have to do all the time. Uh, we have to be prepared to go without cameras. Um, we just have to be able to rely on our phones solely. So we have to make sure we have Wi-Fi connections. We have to make sure we have equipment ready to go, equipment that we can ditch if necessary. Um, we have to make, we just, there's some planning that you, a lot of the planning for election night coverage, there's no way to know what you're doing until it's election night and you're there in the thick of it. For this one, it's obviously very different because it's a municipal election. So everybody is in town. Everyone's kind of accessible to a certain degree. Um, so I've been, you know, just doing the homework, you know, figuring out who everybody's press secretary is, where the various people are relevant. You know, you're not going to be asking people about a city councilor that isn't in their district. Other than the typical, you know, uh, research, I think since it's municipal elections this time, you have to be a lot more thorough in your research because it's things that affect not as many people, but they're very specific things. Uh, this year I'm actually working, but I'm going to do my best to help support people who are covering it. So I'm doing a lot of uh, planning to prepare food for people who will be stationed here and just being like a good moral support of checking in of people like, okay, how are you doing? So that's all I can do this year. A phone charger, a, um, a portable phone charger, you absolutely need that because when it comes down to it, your phone is your biggest resource during election night coverage. So if your phone is dead, you are, you are off, you're doing nothing. So everyone needs, I think, just a small portable charger to have with them because it, that's your last resort. Your phone is what you need to go to. Breaking news can happen, updates from um, from your, I guess, your news organization that you're working for. Um, just uh, any updates you can get, people calling you, people relying on you, getting out live tweets, Facebook Live. If your camera stops working, you can make do with your phone. If your computer stops working, you can make do with your phone. Interviews can be fine on your phone. You need, your, you need your phone and you need a portable charger for your phone because it will go out, your battery will run out so quickly before you even realize that you're at 2%. Comfortable shoes. Number one, uh, bring comfortable shoes and a rain jacket everywhere you go just as a general rule of reporting. Um, you wanna dress well um, and you want a fully charged cell phone. Uh, those four things will get you through almost any situation as a journalist. It's got to have some. It's got to have bought water, bottle water, of course. Um, your recorder or your cell phone, depending on what you use. I prefer. I think it's better for you to use a recorder and a cell phone separately because then you can record in one hand and tweet on the other. Um, and then also like a sandwich, something to eat, because seriously, you're gonna get hungry on the way. <laughs>
water, stay hydrated. That is super important because you're going to be running around a lot on your feet. And when you're talking to someone, you don't want your voice to kind of just like crack or because you're sounding really dry. Um, but also have a buddy. That is super, super huge because like it can be a lot, even on a smaller scale election, like it's just going to be a lot of interactions with people and that could feel very draining. So have a buddy to like kind of be your centering point. Act like you've been there before. Um, don't tweet out a uh, photo of your press pass uh, or uh, don't wear any campaign paraphernalia. If you want to take a souvenir, put it in your pocket. Um, don't, uh, don't go wearing it around because then people will think that you are part of the biased media. Um, if you are doing any tweeting about coverage, make sure you cite any quotes to the actual people that are speaking. Uh, attribute everything that you say. Uh, take photos because people just care a lot more if they can see the face of the person. And you're going to be talking to a lot of people you don't know. Ask them their preferred pronouns. Um, it's just a decent thing to be doing. Don't assume that just because a person looks like a traditional man, they identify as he. Um, and so it's, it's just one of those little things you can do in your tweets that go a long way to making you, you know, really just make you look like a more respectful respectful person. Make sure you get a lot of rest beforehand. When you get chances to eat, eat. Don't be like, oh, I can just eat later. Don't take that for granted. Yes, there's pizza at the end of the night, but eat. Stay rested. You're going to want all the energy you can get. And if you have someone who's looking very interesting and could provide you a lot of answers, just let them talk because you never know what they could say as you're turning away.